Hi class, uh, we are covering section 1.11 today. We're going to be talking about solving equations and inequalities graphically. Okay, so this is a very short lecture. It's everything we're going to do it has to do with graphs. Um, so when we talk about something graphically, you're more than welcome to use any technology that is to your availability. So if you want to use something like Wolfram Alpha, your calculator, Desmos, what have you, so great time to kind of explore the graphs of things okay so <clears throat> again in, like in the last section right I said that anything that we can figure out algebraically we can figure out graphically and vice versa if I have enough information to create a graph I have enough information to create the function right if I have enough information to solve something through algebra I have enough information to figure out the same thing through the graph of that function Okay, so if we want to solve something graphically, we have to graph both sides of our equal sign or our inequality sign. Okay, and then what we're going to do is after we graph both sides, we're going to look for the points of intersection. So for instance, if I have 2x plus 3 equals 8, I'm going to graph 2x plus 3 and I'm going to graph 8, right? Where those two functions, those two equations intersect with each other, that is the solution to 2x plus 3 equals 8. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to do. Is if I have something here, 3x minus 5 equals negative x plus 3. We know how to solve this algebraically, right? I add x to both sides. I add 5 to both sides. And then I divide both sides by uh, 2, right? Because Or 4, I'm sorry, because when I add this, I'll get 4. So we can do this through algebra. This is very easy to solve through algebra. If I want to do this, however, by graphing, I plot this linear equation and I plot this linear equation. Okay, so I take my graph, I will plot 3x minus 5. So here, 5 is the y intercept, 3 is the slope. I'm sorry, negative 5 is my y intercept and 3 is my slope. So I plot negative uh, 5, I go 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, and so forth until I plot y equals 3x minus 5. Then I plot negative x plus 3. So I start at uh, 3, and then I have a negative slope where I'm going down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, etc. Okay. And the place where these two lines intersect each other is my solution. right? So my solution is at 2, 1, which means if I plug in 2 to both of these equations, I get out a value of 1. So my solution here is 2. Okay. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So the point of intersection, the x value, where these things intersect, is my solution. Okay, if I figured this out by doing algebra, I would add x. So I'd have 4x <clears throat> minus 5 equals 3. I would add 5. So I'd have 4x equals 8. Solve for x, I get x is 8 over 4, which is 2, right? Same thing. So I can do this through algebra, okay? Or I can do this, do this through graphing. Okay, there's my solution, 2, 1. Okay, therefore my solution is x equals 2. If I did this algebraically again, so I talked through it, so let's do the actual math, right? So add x, add 5, my solution is 2. If we're talking about inequalities, we do the exact same thing. There's no difference, right? Remember for inequalities, when we're doing algebra to solve an inequality, if I ever multiply or divide by a negative, then my inequality switches directions, and that's the only thing different, okay? However, if we're doing this via uh, graphing, we don't have to worry about that. We're just gonna graph our two inequalities and then look for their overlapping areas basically right so if I want to solve this quadratic being less than this uh, square root right so x squared minus 2x minus 3 being less than the square root of x minus 1 minus 1 for the interval of 1 to infinity so you might say well why is there this limitation right well look what we have here I can't plug in negatives to square root of x minus 1 so this is the domain for the square root portion okay so even if I solve this algebraically okay 
If my answer for some reason is less than one, it's an extraneous solution because I can't have something less than one in the domain of my original um, comparison, right? Okay, so we have our graph here. Let's go ahead and graph this quadratic. If we factor this, very easy to graph, but we're doing this graphically. So at this point, you can really just throw this into your calculator or Desmos or what have you and get your graph for the left side, okay? Uh, for our right side, we have square root of x minus 1 minus 1, okay? So that graph looks like this, okay? So their point of intersection here is the solution, okay? If you're using decimals, it's very easy to find where two functions intersect each other. If you're using your calculator, there's a function for that. Um, if you're using some other program, just make sure you're familiar with how to use it, okay? Now, I need to know when my quadratic function is less than my exponential, I'm sorry, my square root function, but it has to only exist from one and over, right? Because anything behind one, this function doesn't actually exist. So I don't care about what happens over here, just from one and forward, okay? And these are the parts where my function is less, right? It's less from one all the way up to their point of intersection. 3.1, right? So our interval then <clears throat> is from 1 to 3.11. So notice that 1 is included, but 3.11 is not, okay? 1 is included because at 1, my function is less than this function, right? The parabola is below, and I am allowed to plug 1 into this equation, as is at, as I am to this one. However, at 3.11, my function is not less than this function, my parabola is equal to this square root function at 3.11, okay? So 3.11 is not included, so it gets an open bracket. However, negative one is included because the parabola is less than the square root function at that point, okay? So the true interval is from one up to, but not including 3.11. And again, I can add more points of accuracy here. This is a square root function. So no matter what I plug in, it's gonna pretty much go on forever and ever and ever, right? So if we were to set the entire equation to zero, it would be a little bit different, okay? Instead of a three, that minus one here would be added over. So I would be bumped up to a negative two instead of negative three. And then the square root doesn't combine with anything. So this would be the new equation. And I would be interested in when this is less than or equal to zero. So again, all I did was take this equation and zero it out, right? Add three, subtract the square root minus one. This is an entirely new equation. However, its solution is the same as the solution set for this. The reason being is because I was equal the entire time. Right? Whatever I did to one side of the equation, I did to the other. I didn't change anything, right? So if I don't change anything, the solution set does not change either, right? So now if I graph this, right, which you definitely would need some sort of a grapher to do because this is something difficult, okay? I get a graph that looks like this. Notice I have the dashed lines, right? The dashed lines is because I'm strictly less than zero. So from this point, anything below this function, right? Anything that's below the x-axis is negative, okay? Because these are my y values, right? So these are all the negative y values. So anything below is negative, okay? This right here is the last point where I am equal to zero or less than zero. So this is not included in my set, but anything from this value to this value. And look, what do we have? Well, this looks like one of me, and this looks like a little bit more than 3. It's probably 3.11. And yes, in fact, it is. Okay. So the solution here is the exact same. Okay. It's the exact same solution. All right. So including 1, because it's less than 0, and it's where my function starts, up through 3.11, but not including 1, 1, is the solution set to this. So that's really what happens when you zero things out. You turn it from two equations that you are um, equating into a single one, but the solution set is the same.